Hey folks, this is Scott with Leading Edge Archery. Hey, elk season is right around the corner, and one of the questions I get every year is, you know, what makes a good elk bow? Is there really a difference between an elk bow and, a, and a, any other, a bear or a deer, white-tailed deer, so on and so forth? You know, and overall, you can kill any game animal with about any bow that's on the market. There are some things that we do a little different here at the shop to help make uh, your experience in successfully harvesting an elk a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, you know, this year I'm looking at the, the uh, PSE, the new NTN, NXT uh, 31 is what I'm going to be shooting. Yeah, it's a little bit shorter than what I traditionally like because I love to shoot long. We'll shoot out to 100 yards pretty pretty often. Um, and with a 31-inch bow, that makes it a little more difficult. But uh, PSC's system this year is really, really good. I'm happy with it. It's shooting awesome. I'll tell you one of the big things that we look for in an elk bow for our customer base is the back wall, how much value it has. Um, the PSC is well known, you know, to be able to hold for a long time because their valley is so forgiving. You know, we also really like the elites. They do a good job of that and the primes also. So, but once again, they all can go kill an elk any, at any given time. But I want to talk about a couple of the features on this bow that I think set it apart. You know, one of the big things for me is the sight. Um, I prefer the option archery sight. This is the option eight. Um, and in the option eight, if we look at it really close, I have the one, two, three, four, five pin model. This pin actually, this side actually had eight, but I ended up cutting three of those pins out because I don't like all the clutter that an eight pin uh, gives us. Um, what makes this site so unique and what you see me do there is open and close the window. So I'm in spot and stalk mode here. I'll have this door closed so I can use all of the five of these pins from 20 to 60. And then if I get into a situation with an elk that's a really long shot or I want to completely get rid of the clutter, I can open that door get it out of the way and then I've got a one pin traveler that I can run down to 100 yards if I choose to do so. You know even here in Texas hunting over feeders and hunting out of tree stands and blinds you know a lot of times I'll run this in the single pin mode and run that all the way to the very top at 20 yards. The site's multi-versatile. Um, it gives you literally two sites in one. You know I'd say one of the handicaps of some of the travel sites that are out there is that this entire unit moves up and down and if you forget to move that back to what's called static zero to make sure these other pins are now are 20, 30, and 40 respectively, um, you're gonna shoot way over top of your, your animal choice. So um, we really, really like this option eight sight. Um, and they make an option six and an option four, um, specifically for mountain west hunting. You know, elk, mule deer, bears, anything out there that you're gonna have to reach out and touch one. Um, probably the secondary thing that is probably a very polarizing subject, and I'm laughing because when this thing first came out, I kind of giggled about it. Uh, but this is equivalizer. Um, also made by Option Archery. Yeah, it looks kind of funny, but what it does for us as a backcountry hunter, I'm eliminating one piece of equipment, which is awesome. And it, so it makes the bow a lot lighter to carry in the field. Um, this is in the quiver mode right here, and it holds five arrows, um, and it works as a stabilizer. Now, along with that, I like to counteract that with a back bar. So it kind of looks like my target bow setup, and it's giving me that same feel and function. So when I'm out there happening to shoot really long, that 50 to 80 to 100 yards, I'm getting that same feel as I do with the target bow, and so the system works really well. The other cool thing about it, I did probably 170 some miles last year with this sucker right over top of my neck, like so, and you can hold the equalizer here and hike as much as you want and have no bow hanging from your hands at all. Um, actually, when you put your pack on, the bow will sit there and get compressed in between it. You don't even have to hold it. You can let go of it and walk as much as you like. Um, pretty effortlessly and it makes it really nice when you when you go hiking in the backcountry. Um, also when we take that off when I'm going into the getting back in there I can put this in quiver mode and like I said we're eliminating one piece of equipment by putting it up here into the quiver section. I can actually shoot the bow here too and I do it a lot if I'm shooting really close. And I put this in the quiver mode, lock this down and now I've got my quiver on the bow. I'm el essentially eliminating either one piece of hardware, which would be the front stabilizer and or the quiver, which once again is making the bow extremely light. Um, I typically don't use it here in Texas when I get here. You know, it can get somewhat cumbersome out of tree stands um, and the blinds because you got it sticking out in the front. And he's, even as a short guy, it sometimes will impede, you know, movement within the blind. But overall, it's just an incredible system. Primarily, I use mine for mountain west hunting. And once again, you can quickly take it out of quiver mode once you get to the area you're hunting. And all these attachments come with it and you're ready to go so one thing we do a little different with it with the equalizer too is take this arrow holding bracket you got to turn it around 
because from the factory it's going to come to on the left side only. Um, it, it, it eliminates the need for the back bar, but I think the back bar is crazy important for bow balance. So we really like that back bar to make sure we've got a good balance front to back so the bow is sitting in my hand without dumping and diving forward. So those are two of the big features I wanted to talk about um, for a good elk hunting bow. Do you need this in whitetail hunting? Probably not. You know, you go sit in a blind or a tree stand at 20 to 30 yards and, and uh, pick off animals all day long, and some of this gear is just really not needed. Um, single pin sights usually the norm for a whitetail bow simple stabilizer. Uh, but these two features here in this equipment I wanted to really showcase because it really makes a difference out in the field uh, when you're going out to, to your next elk hunt.